High class, Captain Hundley with MT-151. Uh, for this chapter, chapter six, we're gonna be going over hose, uh, fittings in this lecture, and also the nozzle, okay? First off, let's talk about hose. There are many different types of hose out there. Most common are gonna be your double jacketed hose, which is gonna be uh, a hose with a plastic center or rubber interior, which is kind of older school. But in our department, we use a thermal line hose. This hose is a little lighter than the double jacketed. It has a plastic liner interior, which makes it lighter and also stronger. Um, and you're also able to move potable water through in case you need to have water to drink through it. Um, also, another type of hose would be single jacketed hose. Single jacketed hose is not really used for uh, structural firefighting. It's more of a wildland firefighting. It's light, uh, maneuverable, and you can see most of the time it's put in like wildland packs, like you see here. The thing about single jacketed hose, it doesn't have that double jacket. So if an ember or any heat uh, makes contact with this hose, it burns really easy and causes holes uh, during our firefighting operations. Okay. All right, so the sizes of hose, there's lots of different sizes of hose. We have uh, this one, for instance, this is an inch and a half hose, okay? We don't say one and a half inches in the fire service. When we describe uh, tools or hose, we say inch and a half hose. So this would be inch and a half hose. We also carry a inch and three quarter inch hose. Uh, right here we have a uh, two and a half inch hose, okay? You can see that's up here in engine 81. Uh, this is set up, we have 900 feet in each of these beds for two and a half inch hose for large fire attacks. Uh, also in the center, we have four inch hose. Okay, four inch hose is normally used for uh, connecting to a hydrant or even for master stream appliances for using big amounts of water for an Apollo or deck vent operations. You want to use a four inch hose, which is a lot of water flowing through. Um, other departments will use a three inch hose, and there's there's other types of hoses out there. Inch, uh, one inch hose, we do have a booster one inch line in here, which is a rubber hose. This hose will normally use for vehicle type fires or dumpster fires. But lots of departments, wherever you work, you're gonna have lots of different types of equipment. This is just the basic, and this is just what we carry. Uh, but this is pretty much the basic stuff you're gonna see is inch and a half, two and a half, and four inch hose, okay? Now, let's talk about the couplings. These type of couplings here, you'll notice, these are called rocker couplings, okay? The rocker couplings have this rocker on the end, Okay, and they even have some little indicator. This is called the Higby indicator. This is the point where you would connect the two hoses without stripping the hose. So we have our rocker lugs here, and I have my male side of the coupling and my female side of the coupling. Male, female side. The female side has a swivel on it. So if I wanted to connect these two hoses, I could line up the two indicators on the male side, it's just a line on the lug compared to an indicator on the swivel. So, so I don't cross thread. I could technically line those threads up. Boom, I'm connecting my hose together, okay? But most of the time you can just connect in any fashion and eventually it will start connecting once it gets to that, um, that indicator area, okay? Or that little sleeve. So these are the, the rocker lugs. There's other type of lugs out there. There are winged lugs. Winged lugs are normally used for large pieces of hose to connecting to uh, a hydrant or even to the side intake of the engine. It's just, you're using a lot of force and putting a lot of torque onto uh, the male side of the coupling. So you've got a really good fit with those uh, winged lugs. Another type of lug would be a pinned lug, these small little pins. Um, we don't necessarily have those here. Uh, you can look those up either online or in your book for pin lugs. And we also have recess lugs. Recess lugs 
we actually have right here on our booster line, I'll show you since we have it here. Recess legs, you'll see there's a recessed area to disconnect and connect uh, different pieces of hose together or the nozzle to the hose, okay? So that would be an example of a recess lug. So there are lots of different lugs out there. Uh, there's also one other lug. It's a universal lug. It's called the stores lug. This stores coupling, it's a big thing in Canada in the northern areas. Um, here, not so much in Southern California, um, but it's a universal lug where it doesn't, it doesn't have a male side and doesn't have a female side, but you can connect it together on any side, okay? Uh, so we talked about the couplings, the sizes of hose, the types of hose, male versus female sides of hose. Now we're gonna move on to fittings. There are lots of types of fittings in the fire service. I have a stack of fittings here. Here's our big fitting. This would be um, what we would call a four inch double male. Double male because both sides are a male type of coupling. You see that? So it's equal on both sides. It's a four inch double male. This would be connecting two pieces of hose. Let's say I have uh, one hose coming from one direction, another from the other side. They're both female. I wouldn't be able to connect those. I would need this coupling or fitting, sorry, this fitting to make that universal connection complete. There's different sizes of that. We have a two and a half inch double male here. And that was connected here to a two and a half inch double female, female sign on both, both ends. This would be a two and a half inch double female fitting. Now, not only do we have pieces of uh, fittings to the, connect the same size of hose on the opposite sides, but we also have increasers and decreasers. This would be considered an increaser. Reason why you always start at the female side to the male side, because the male side is the discharge side of the hose. So this would be a four inch to two and a half inch decreaser. I'm decreasing from a large stick of hose, a four inch hose, and I'm decreasing it to a two and a half inch stick of hose. So this would be known as a decreaser fitting. What do you know? We also have increaser fittings, okay? Right here, start at the female side. You would have a two and a half inch female to four inch male increaser, or two and a half to four inch increaser. Okay, and this would be increasing small hose to get into big hose. Now, not only do we have fittings, we also have ways of splitting hose lines into multiple lines. This would be known as a gated Y valve. Okay, the reason why it's called a gated Y valve, it looks like a Y. Firefighters are not geniuses. Okay, whatever something looks like is normally the name of a tool. We have a tool in the side rig, it's called the J tool. Actually, it looks like a J. We have a K tool, we have an A tool. We just name things based on what they look like. So this would be a Y, a gated Y. The reason why it's gated, it has gated balls right here. We have a ball valve inside, and I could shut off that line, or I could open that line with these gates here. So this would be a two and a half inch hose connecting to the gated Y going to two, two and a half inch uh, lines here. So I'm increasing from a single line to a dual line with this one device. So this would be a gated Y. Now, not only do I have a gated Y, I have the opposite of the gated Y, which would be called the Siamese. Now, the Siamese would be a single line Sorry, double line coming in, female to male, double line coming in to feed a single line. Now you might ask, why would I use this tool? Why would I want to have one hose when I would have two? That makes no sense. Um, a lot of times we have pressure issues. We're not gonna get too much into calculations and hydraulics and how the engineer pumps the water to the scene. But sometimes there's not enough water pressure or flow 
for a good stream for firefighting. So we need two lines to create one so we have that extra flow and pressure. So this would be a gated Y. Now some important tools here. We have tools right here called spanners. These tools are really important. And this is what is used to connect these hoses together. As you can see with the lugs, I have the lugs here, I connect the spanner wrench onto lug, and I can turn it. And this is how a spanner works. This is a spanner tool for, um, for hose. I can also go the opposite way too. It's universal. I can go this way and use this end of the spanner, or I can go this way and use this, this side. Normally, if you have big two big sticks of hose, I take both spanners and I connect it connect the hose really tight so we don't have any leaks in our hose line. Uh, last tool to talk about with hose is going to be the hydrant wrench. Okay, the hydrant wrench obviously used for hydrants. This valve uh, moves for different size uh, hex nuts on the hydrants. And this is what is used to open the hydrant to get water into the large diameter hose legs. So, now that we talked about fittings, last part of hose is going to be the nozzles. Down here I have a couple nozzles here, okay? This nozzle right here is a small inch and a half nozzle, but this is a fog nozzle, okay? There are uh, a couple type of nozzles are fog nozzles, they're uh, smooth bore nozzles, and they're master stream. But this one is called a fog nozzle. I can change the stream by twisting the fog horn on here. I can go from a straight stream to a fog stream. Usually it's right to fight, left to live. Le left would make it a fog, right would be straight. But this is known as a broken stream when it's being applied. It's not a solid stream, it's broken apart with this little deflector on the front. And then we use this gate right here to open or close the nozzle. So this is a fog nozzle. And this one is a technical SOS selective stream nozzle. Now another type of nozzle, this would be for our two and a half inch hose right here. This is a, also a fog nozzle, but it has a little secret thing right here. It says GPM, gallons per minute. I can actually select with the arrow, here it is, almost past it. This right now is 250 gallons per minute. But I can choose how many gallons I want this nozzle to use. This would be known as a select a gallonage nozzle. 125, 150, 200, 250 GPM. It also has a select a stream, right to fight, left to live. I want this thing ready to go, right to fight. Has the same ball valve for applying the water, go through. But this would be known as a SOS, SOG fog nozzle. Last nozzle we have here for handheld nozzles. This is a smooth bore nozzle, okay? A smooth bore nozzle is going to be a smooth, solid stream of water. It's not going to be broken at all or have a deflector. It's going to use the length of the head of the nozzle for the smooth bore to, to make that stream perfect and solid as you're using it. Solid stream nozzle. Uh, the reason why we would use a solid stream nozzle would be for uh, penetration use. If we want to use a solid stream of water to penetrate to the base of the fire, we would use this. But also we can get a longer distance and reach with this nozzle because it's not broken and it can eventually kind of fall apart from a wind movement or just how long I got to go with the fog nozzle. This will actually go farther because it's a solid core of water coming out of the stack tip. I could choose different stack tip sizes for more water, okay? So this would be uh, more water right here. This would be an inch and an eighth, one and an eighth inch tip.